If you're an Alien fan, then you are likely aware of the events that surrounded the destruction of the colony of Hadley's Hope on the moon of Acheron, otherwise known as LV-426. The Hadley's Hope incident, or disaster, calamity, whatever you want to call it, was detrimental to the shaping of the wider political and military agendas of the Middle Heavens region. So today I want to explore what this event has led to and how it has contributed to a growing new Cold War on the frontiers of known space within the alien universe. The Hadley's Hope disaster occurred in the year 2179 on the moon where the colony was situated. Hadley's Hope was first established on the moon during the 2150s and from that time to the late 2170s housed a total of around 150 inhabitants. The colony while not thriving was seemingly doing quite well considering the harsh conditions present on the moon and the heavy focus on terraforming the world before it could be sufficiently populated. However just as the colony was beginning to thrive tragedy would befall it. The colony would eventually come to be infested by a xenomorph outbreak originating from the engineer's ancient derelict located on the same moon of Acheron. The inhabitants were quickly overrun by these creatures and would succumb to the overwhelming power of a xenomorph infestation before being able to even relay what was happening to Earth or any other off-world colony or station. After a few weeks of lost contact, the United Americas and Weyland Yutani sent the USS Sulaco along with a contingent of USCMCs, a civilian consult and company representatives to discover the truth surrounding the events that occurred within the colony. They quickly learned of the nature of the fall of the colony, and they too suffered greatly at the hands of the xenomorphs there. Looking at an all out defeat, and to ensure any alien specimens could not be recovered in the aftermath, Ellen Ripley and the Marines decided the best plan was to nuke the colony from the safety of the Sulaco in orbit around the world. Things didn't go entirely to plan though, however the colony was indeed eventually vaporised by a nuclear detonation. However, it was of the colony's atmospheric processor. In the aftermath of this, both Weyland yutani and the United Americas, who had both co-funded the Hadley's Hope colony, decided to conduct separate investigations into the events that occurred there. The first step for the UA was to try and obtain the flight recorder from the USS Sulaco, which unfortunately for them has been missing in action since it ejected its emergency evacuation vehicle on the surface of the prison world, Fiorina 161. With that lead dead, the UA and Wayu turned their attention to the world of Acheron. Both factions took interest in finding potential survivors of the disaster in order to debrief them for answers about what had occurred on the moon. Whilst the atmospheric processor and the colony of Hadley's Hope were both vaporised, it was theorised if any colonists had made it as far as the Elemium range, then they would hopefully have not been. It's thought that if they had made it this far, then they would have the highest chance of survival, due to the shielding of the geology in the area that provided shielding from the nuclear blast and fallout. And whilst both the UA and the company sent search teams to the surface to look for survivors, the company would go a step further. They were quick to manufacture a new orbital station known by the name of Cathar. Created by the company in order to function as a site to move any potential survivors found on the surface. Cathar though had a second main purpose, as it was revealed to actually be a research station, developed to recover any alien materials from the moon, if any remained. While we don't know how successful the company was in obtaining xenomorph specimens, we do know that neither the company nor the UA had their questions answered about what happened on the moon. This led to a larger distrust forming between the UA and the company, each suspecting each other of foul play and acting in their own self-interest. Did the company sabotage the UA's colonial marines sent to the moon? Or was the UA once again overstepping its bounds when it came to its military actions in the middle heavens? 
During the Lena 349 occupation, the Three World Empire, who were heavily associated with Weyland Yutani, were forced to allow an ongoing UA occupation of one of their notable worlds. Since then, tensions have been high between the two human federations and their company by association. Hadley's hope has only made this situation worse, with each faction thinking the other is a liar. The UA and the Three World Empire have been close allies since the early colonial age of humanity in the 2100s. But thanks to recent events, cracks are beginning to form in this relationship. The UA has other theories though. Since the inception of the Union of Progressive Peoples, they and the UA have been in a state of cold war and have seen continued skirmishes along their territory borders and over control of specific regions of space. Some in the UA believe that the UPP is in some way responsible for the Hadley's Hope incident, much like the UPP's involvement in the Tynstein campaign only years prior. So what was the larger fallout of the Hadley's Hope disaster? Well, aside from the mystery of it, all the events inspired further mistrust and unease between three major human federations in the Middle Heavens regions. Lines have been drawn in the sand, and everyone is an enemy now. The Cosmic Cold War is officially now in swing. The destruction of Hadley's Hope Colony is a massive contributing factor to all these insecurities forming between former allies, and has added gasoline to the fire between existing enemies. Only time will tell what will come of our small corner of the galaxy in the future of the Alien Universe. But with one more expansion to be released for Alien the RPG, we will likely get to see even more political unrest forming around human space. And if there really is an armed conflict within it. Before I go, I wanted to let you know about the Acheron Colonial Marketplace. The one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merch. Here you can pick up shirts, hoodies, mugs, phone cases and more. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions, please leave them in the comments or contact me through Twitter or on the Project Acheron Discord. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and share this video. And if you want to really help see this channel thrive and grow, as well as gain a bunch of awesome rewards for yourself, consider becoming a patron, such as Christopher Dussinger and Ambrosia, leaders of the Project Acheron Hive. I hope to see you all here again very soon, but until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.